So subsonic 2-2 long rifle versus high velocity 2-2 long rifle. I guess there's been a lot of debates about this in various forums all over the place about what you should use and where, because after all, um, say CCI Stingers are very nearly twice as powerful as subsonics. But I've certainly found at longer ranges, at like 100 yards, they're not very accurate. Now I don't know if that's because they're not going that much past the sound barrier and so eventually the sonic boom sort of catches up with them at longer ranges. I'm not sure, and certainly with subsonics, if you shoot a rabbit in the head at say 90 yards, it's still dead. But how much difference does it actually make in terms of, of power? So let's find out. I've got some uh, CCI subsonics, I've got some CCI stingers, I've got the sort of catalogue test. So to start with, let's get them both on the table and let's have a closer look. So here we are, we've got some CCI stingers on the left and we've got some CCI subsonics on the right. And you can see I've pulled both of these cartridges just so you can get a sort of a decent idea of what they're about. If you look at the slug, the lead, lead slug from the Stinger, you can see it's got like a copper wash. And that's 32 grains of lead. And it'll have that copper wash because it's going at such a high velocity that if it didn't, bits of lead, because it's going supersonic, would start breaking up in the barrel, which affects accuracy. As well with the subsonics, because they're only going at 1,050 feet per second, that isn't really a problem. So they're not. And yeah, I know, they're really mashed, and that's because they were a nightmare <laughs> to pull out, to be honest. And I've done the maths on it, you can see here, with the CCI Stingers, you've got 32 grains of lead, 1,640 feet per second, and 191.16 foot-pounds of energy. With the subsonics, you've got 40 grains of lead, going at 1,050 feet per second, and that's 97.95 foot-pounds of energy. So it's a lot less powerful, but in my experience, a lot more accurate. Because you're going subsonic, you don't have to worry about it slowing down and then the sonic boom kind of catching up with it, which is something you do have to worry about with these. And obviously, depending on the quarry, generally speaking, these have still got plenty of energy. You know, I mean, a rabbit needs, what, three foot-pounds of energy to the head to, to be dispatched, so it's not really a problem. But one of the things that's interesting is the gunpowder, because, if I can zoom in a little bit, as you would expect, there's definitely more of it with the stingers than with the subsonics. But it's also quite different. This stuff's a lot darker than that stuff. I mean, it's just nitro, but it must be a different kind of nitro. Especially seeing as they are both CCIs, it's not like a manufacturer thing. So I'm sure there's a reason for that. So if any of you guys know, you know, let me know. But uh, yeah, there is quite a difference in power. The advantage, of course, for anybody who doesn't know, um, obviously if you're using subsonic ammo, because it doesn't go past the sound barrier, you just don't get that crack. So when it's silenced, these are a lot better. But either way, I've got some catalogues that I'm going to shoot at. It's sort of hobo ballistic gel, as it were. And uh, yeah, I'll shoot two shots at each one, and we'll see how much they expand and what the penetration's like. So let's crack on. We've got 2-2 long rifle subsonic, and I've sealed this because I had a bit of tape over the end because it kept flapping open, to be honest, so I haven't seen this yet either. You notice the two shots, wide apart, and that was actually deliberate because I wanted a good example of both, and obviously if they're through the same hole, then that would have been a very fair test. So let's cut them open. And let's see. I'll just peel that off. And let's see how we've got on. I get them open. There we go. Right. Well, it's gone through to page 49. It's starting to slow down at 209. Haven't caught the lump of lead yet. We're getting a few fragments. at 393 further we've got to go through
definitely some expansion there by the looks of things. Interesting to see if we can actually retrieve these. Um, obviously it didn't go straight through. Hmm. Yeah, starting to get bits of lead now. You can see there. It looks like it's broken up quite a lot. Although you can see, look, there's the heel. So it has flattened it quite well. And there's just a bit of a fragment. That's off the one anyway. Bit of fragment. Ooh. Bigger pieces now. It's a nice big fragment there. It's weird though, because the one seems to have gone further. I don't know if there's any bits I've missed. Probably a good job I did too, really. <laughs> the weirdly the left-hand one seems to have gone a bit further, so we'll judge it on that. Now oh, look. That's almost come out in one piece. Wow. So that's the left hand bullet. And that is almost in one piece. But you can see it's very squashed up, a lot of expansion there. And that's gone through to a page, approximately page 1001. So that's two thirds of it through, through the catalogue. Quite impressed with that, and obviously this is for both, but as you can see there's a lot of expansion there, so if that was going into your midriff, <laughs> you would not be having a good day. Try to space them out a bit because, yeah, wouldn't be a very fair test otherwise. Try and get this tape off so it's a bit easier to work with. That's the easy stuff to get off, to be fair. Okay. Right. Let's open them up. We can see quite a solid hole there. It's strange how that there seems to be a difference between the two, depending on where they're hitting, but no signs of any lead yet. Oh uh No, no. Okay. First fragment. Because I suppose with power, it's not necessarily always about penetration, because it does depend how well it dumps its energy. That's the first sort of fairly large fragment at 689. That's a nice big fragment. 757. I think that's from the same bullet. Oh, interesting. Look. Just like powdering up. Oh yeah, look. As we're going through, it is just like powder. That's a biggish fragment. And you can see that that's dumped its energy quite a lot. I think that's a focus. 
quite a lot more than the subsonic did and it's, yeah it's going through I mean it's just cracked now but I think you're talking about 1187 so really in terms of penetration not that much difference quite interesting the only thing I would say is you just it seems to have dumped its energy a lot better with I mean those are the two from the with the subsonic and they've more or less stayed together into one piece you can see the heel on each one there and if you look at the fragments from the well there's a few of the fragments from high velocities it's just into broken into little pieces so yeah quite interesting not as much difference as you'd think so in hindsight after that testing do I think it's worth using high velocity 2-2 ammunition and the short answer is no really not really I mean you saw the results you're talking about a thousand pages using my hobo ballistic gel a thousand pages with subsonics you're talking about 1200 pages with the high velocities you know they're both penetrating very well the subsonics expanded really well, mushroomed out, flattened themselves really well. The high velocities did just disintegrate and fragment a lot better, which means they're probably safer, frankly, because they're less likely to ricochet, because they are breaking up a lot more, or if they do ricochet, there's less large chunks of lead to be f thrown around. But really, when you take into account the difference in cost, I mean, CSO stingers are a lot more expensive, and they're a lot louder, because, you, you know, they're going high velocity. And when you're reaching out to further distances, which after all should really be the main argument for high velocities, that you can shoot flatter for further, really when you take into account that they're only going at 1640 feet per second and that sonic boom's, you know, hot on its tail and as soon as it passes it's going to tumble, really, yeah, subsonics are the way to go. So yeah, I mean I hope you found that useful and yeah, if you're out for uh, buying some new ammunition for your 2-2, stay subsonic. And yeah, you can be able to hit bunnies in the head at 100 yards, no problem at all. So uh, yeah, keep watching.